I was born in Wilmington, Delaware, on the west side. And then I moved to, you know what, I lived in Wilmington, I lived in Philly, I moved to North Carolina at a young age, and Atlanta at a young age. I think I've been down south since I was about seven. So, you know, I'm equally city and equally southern. I'm just like a mixture. And what part of North Carolina exactly? It was Fayetteville. It was very, very, very ghetto and ratchet. I remember a lot of ratchet shit. Like, I was around a time when my mom was rapping. My mom was rapping. I remember she used to teach me raps and stuff when, when we lived down there. And I don't remember much. Do you remember what ages these moves happened? Like, if we had, like, a, like a history of Suki, do you remember what age was Philly, uh, 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 Fayetteville, Atlanta? Uh, no. Okay. But, but I live, I lived in um, Delaware a long time, and I lived in Atlanta a long time. Those is the those states is the most um, places that I lived for a longer amount of time. Currently, you reside in Atlanta. Yeah. How often do you go back to to Delaware? Yeah. Um, when they book me out there, I get when I get booked in the city. You know, I come through. Whoop the whoop whoop. I get booked in Philly a lot, you know. Always come back and show love. Still have family in Delaware or no? Uh, yes, I have the biggest family. I have one of the biggest families in Delaware. Now, growing up in, in Delaware and then these other cities, these other states, what was that like for you? Can you paint that picture for growing us? Growing up in Delaware was, is, was very, I felt like I was kind of like in a cage. It's not, I'm the only star from Delaware, I'm, and I'm not saying that to boost myself up, but I'm like the only big person from there. So you gotta understand, if it's only one star from a place, it's because people aren't really able to be their self. Maybe it's like a closed-minded place. So, you know, th shit, I don't even really remember the question, but, what was the question again? I was asking, what was it like growing up in these well, parts? Well, growing up there, yeah. I, I grew up on the west side. You know, I lived uh, down bottom on a hill, 4th Street. Um, and it wasn't like, I didn't have the best childhood. It was okay, you know. It wasn't horrible, but it was okay, I guess. What I mean, made it okay? Because my grandma put me in a a extra curricular activities. So I was in dance class, tap cl tap dancing, ballet, hip hop. I was in acting. I went to a culture arts school. So, you know, I'm very, you know, conscious, you know, about my black history. And I was always in creative arts. That's why I'm like how I am now. I always was in, you know, something like that. So that paid a big part in who I am today, my schooling. And you mentioned your mother was also a rapper herself. Yeah, my, my mom used to rap a little bit, you know. I, I feel like she is the reason why I rap right now. Because she used to, you know, she she taught me my first rap. I told you that about photo. But, yeah. And she's my manager. And she was your manager from the jump? Yeah. Now, did she... With her rap career, did she... It wasn't a rap career. She just knew how to rap. Oh, And she made a couple of songs, like, probably never recorded them. I see. Do you feel like she's vicariously living through you? Maybe in her own way. She wants to come to my shows and stuff, but I don't really bring my mom to my shows. Why not? She manages you. Because, well, you know, I got managers for different reasons, you know. She, but my shows are very out of control. I am a hot mess, and it's just like a certain respect that I got. I don't want my mom to hear me screaming about sucking dick on stage. Well, I don't care if she hears me, but I don't want to be uncomfortable. So maybe one day she'll come to my show, but. Now, she is part of your management team. Yep. So I'm sure she's 
seen your social media. I'm sure she's seen your videos. Yeah, she sees, she knows everything that I do. She sees everything. She books my show. She does everything. But for me to be comfortable, I don't want to put. I don't want to sing about my pussy in front of my grandma and my mom. Mm -hmm. And they just need to understand that. I don't want to do it in front of like. Okay, y'all can hear my songs, but I don't want y'all to be all in my face like. <sighs> now when the you fuck? Were, <laughs> now when you were rapping, was it this? Vulgar? Was it this? I raw? always been. I always been a nasty ass hoe. I always been nasty with my music, all the way till I was first started. I was just nasty. I was, my first rap. I feel like I was already talking about <laughs> a nigga eating his pussy. That's just how I am. I can't help that. I'm. I'm just nasty, and disgusting, and disturbing, and it didn't make. It makes me happy being like this. Is it for shock value? Is it for attention? No, I'm Is just it for nasty. clout? No, I'm just nasty. I'm just nasty. I'm 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 a dirty little slut. And I just feel like even before I came out the closet, I feel like I came out the closet like how, you know, a gay boy comes out the closet and probably be there. So I was very, you know, conscious. I was you know, I was bold with it. I, I was very conscious and I still am conscious, but I'm not gonna let no conscious community put me in a fucking box and tell me that I can't dress the way I wanna dress or speak how I wanna speak. Like, I'm not a part of no fucking cult, all right? I want to sing about my pussy, and that's what the fuck I'm gonna do. Now, when you say you've always been like this, this, this vulgar, this raw, this explicit, how young did these type of lyrics start? Thinking back hindsight, 2020 in your life. Uh, uh, it was before I got dick. It was before I even tried dick. I, I was sing. I was sing about it. Are we saying middle school here? Are we saying high school here? Are we saying after high school? I can't remember. I, 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 maybe it was the first time. Maybe it, it was very close to the first time that I lost my virginity, or right before. But I knew I was singing about pussy and dick. I mean, I don't remember that much, but I always been nasty. I like singing about shit like that. When it comes to your virginity, how young were you when you lost it? <laughs> I was 15. Remember how it happened? Yep, I was 15. I lost my virginity to a guy who was 18. And it was in my aunt's basement. And it was it really wasn't it wasn't all that I expected it to be. I thought I wanted to be grown and I wanted to I don't know try it because I guess at 15 you know a lot of people was losing their virginity, and it wasn't it was just like I was just like okay so that's it you know, and then that was it. Now when you lost it. Was it spontaneous? Was was it premeditated? You knew you were gonna lose it when you lost it. I don't it? know. I don't want to talk about it because I don't. I don't. I don't like it. Like I didn't. It's that's not one of the stories that you know I feel proud about selling because it was just stupid as fuck. Like I have a message for all the girls. Like don't rush to lose your virginity. Like it's not all that until you learn how to use that pussy. Like it's not. It's really not all that you think it is. Losing your virginity is is not all that it, you think it is. Don't rush to do it. Like, you know, it's other stuff you should rush to do, like get, get money or something. So was there some sort of regret after you lost it? Was no, I don't have no regret because it was going to get lost anyway. I was going to be fucking. But it was just like, that shit's stupid as fuck. Like, all, all your teenage life you be thinking about, oh, one day I'm going to lose my virginity. And you just lose it, and it's just, okay, that's it. But now niggas be fucking the shit out of me, so. This person you lost it to. Oh, no. What about him? <laughs> was this your first love back then? No, was I, didn't, this... I wasn't in, I, no, I wasn't in love. Okay. I don't, has I ever been in love? Uh-uh. No, I wasn't. Were you in a relationship? Were you guys boyfriend girlfriend? I mean, I guess I don't know. 
A 18-year-old and a 15-year-old. 18-year-old can tell a 15-year-old anything. It wasn't his virginity that was being lost, it was mine. So of course, whatever he told me is what he told me. And I, of course I'm gonna listen because I was 15. So I wanna tell you 15 year olds, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Like, bitch, go get some, learn how to get some money before you learn how to suck a dick, like period, pill. And just curious, back then at 15, you said uh, where you had lost it, the area you had lost it, uh, a lot of people uh, were having sex uh, at that age. Um, were you worried about teen pregnancy back then? Were you no, worried no, no, about... no, 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 no. I knew I was, I knew all about that type of stuff. I, I knew I wasn't gonna get pregnant. If I got pregnant, oh my gosh, my aunt and my mom would beat my ass. Like one time, I stayed the night at this guy's house. They beat me the fuck up. Physically beat you? Yes, they did. They beat me up. They beat me with the belt because I went and stayed the night at my baby daddy house because I'd end up getting pregnant by him. So let me tell you mom something. You can't stop a bitch from fucking. If she want to fuck, she going to fuck whether it's in the closet, whether it's at church, whether it's out at, at a motherfucking park, she going to fuck. You just got to talk to her and teach her about sex. Because um, they, I went to spend the night at his house and mind you, he, um, I didn't really know much about sex, but I know he had a, a magnum and a Trojan next to each other. And he used the Trojan. I don't know why he had the Magnum, because he can't fit the Magnum. So I don't know why he had both of them next to each other. So he just used the Trojan. It was like, OK, you just wanted me to see that you have a Magnum? OK. So anyway, uh, fast forward. Um, when my aunts and them found out where I was, they took me to my grandma's house. They gave me a beat in. And I, I, I still went and snuck out of school and fucked them again. So, And then I got pregnant. Oh, damn. I shouldn't have said all that. Too much information? Yeah. So you became a teen mother? I had my baby at 17, uh, 18. I got, yeah, I had my baby at 18. And you know what? I was still a baby myself, so, you know, me, and my son kind of grew up like together, if I want to say it like that. You know, I didn't know everything at that time about mothering and shit, but now I do, you know. I know that shit like the back of my hand, so. You were still in high school? No, I, I, uh, I dropped out of high school. You dropped out. Yeah, I dropped out of high school. And I don't recommend anybody to drop out of high school. Stay in school, get your education, you know, because I can't spell. So I know how to count money. I know how to get money. I feel like me dropping out of high school is the best thing that I ever did because I have ADHD. So they don't even know how to teach children. Like, like the, the type, me growing up, they didn't know how to teach me. I got ADHD. Like, I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. I want to roast people. I want to throw shit. I want to have fun. I want to laugh. That's all I wanted to do in school. So I felt like school was a cage for me because I'm a star. I'm a born, I'm a natural born star. They can't teach me what I already got. They can't, they can't do anything for me. And I feel like they can't even teach me about my motherfucking history or anything cause, cause they, it's like a systematic shit that they got going on in school. I don't fuck with school. So at the end of the day, me dropping out of school is the best thing that I ever did. What grade was it? You I out. was around tenth grade. I just said I can't do this no more. I don't know. I, it just wasn't for me. I don't. I can't. I don't want to be in a fucking cage with a bunch of fucking apes, listening to a fucking t teacher tell me about my fucking history. Like y'all got me fucked up. And I and I don't even. I don't take too well to authority. Like bitch, you ain't even finna tell me shit about nothing. You mean I ain't finna listen to nothing that you talking about? Like that's just how that was. So when you dropped out, was it due to the pregnancy? You just getting pregnant? No, I got I got, I, uh, I got pregnant after school, like during the summer. I was running the streets real bad. I was in the streets heavy. Um, I got pregnant like kind of the summer of when I dropped out. I ah. just I like ran away. I dropped out. I felt like a lot of people didn't understand me at that time in my life, and they didn't. They were trying to mold me into something that it's not in me to be. So would would it be safe to say you being in the streets was the reasoning for dropping out? Uh, I just couldn't do school. It just wasn't me. I don't want I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to 
that shit wasn't me. I knew that I wasn't, I wasn't going to be no fucking worker. I don't want to do nothing like that. I don't want to do nothing in that they had planned at school. I want to be a star. I want to be a rapper. And that's what I am. How did your parents react to that uh, Well, my mom didn't let us watch music videos. We had cameras in our room. We couldn't have boyfriends. I couldn't wear weave. It was very, it was like a cage. And you ever heard about like, the pastor daughter is always the wild one. I feel like being in a fucking cage has made me just, wow, like just don't give a fuck. Cause nobody wanna be in no fucking cage. So I'm just happy that, you know, I got to experience life. You know, I learned a lot from the streets. Uh, um, very street smarts. And you know, I just, I know how to operate out here. And, and, and that's a, a question I'm curious. If you're in this cage, do you break away and then go into the streets? You kind of break, this is what happens with children. When you're in a cage, they run away. They run away. You run away, you, you, you finna, the world finna hit you. I ran away um, in the streets, I'm in the projects, I'm with the drug dealers, I'm with the hood rats. It, it's just, it just molded me, it made me like a real gutter ass bitch. That's, that's just, the streets did a lot to build, you know, Sukihana right now. And that's just, that's just how it go. The kids run away, run the streets and boom. You run away, do you come back? Uh, to your parents at all? I or? never, I never, I never, never really remember coming back. I never really wanted to. I don't know how they got me to come back. I think one day they just, they, they chased me down and they just dragged me back to the house. And I don't know. I don't know. But hey man, it's hey man. The, uh, the ADHD. That was something you were diagnosed with? Yeah, I'm diagnosed with ADHD. I am, you know, I'm very hyper. Like, people don't understand, like, I can't sit down for no hour. Like, I, I'm antsy, I move around. I, I just got a lot going on in my head. I, I'm a creator. So, I'm just not the type that could just sit like this. I, I'm thinking of things, I'm, I'm creating things, I'm inventing things in my head, I'm writing music in my head. I just got a lot going on with me, and I don't feel like, it, being diagnosed with ADHD is a bad thing. Like, I'm a fucking stellar ass bitch. Most people with ADHD are stars. I'm a fucking star. So, you know, that's just, that's just period. That's just me. So, I don't, I don't know. In the past, you had received medication for this thing? Yeah, but that medication just made me normal. It made me sit down. It made me listen to my teacher. And I was just very quiet. And I was just, I felt like a robot. Like the, the medicine they give for ADHD people is robotic. Like you just become not yourself. You're calm. I don't want to be like that. If that was me, then I wouldn't be, be who I am. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be myself. And it actually made me cry during the days for no reason. You remember what medicine it was that you were prescribed? Stratera. Stra Terror, some shit like that. I don't motherfucking know. But all I know is that I got ADHD and I don't give a fuck. I'm special. Niggas know that. People love me. Guess what? A lot of these stars out here got ADHD too. They hyper. I'm a hyper ass speech. I don't care. Never get tired. Fully energetic. Somebody watching this may have ADHD themselves. Yeah. A lot of people do. And they might not speak on it. They might think they might think that it's something to hide or something to be sad about, but it's not. It's something to be proud about. You need to be happy that you got ADHD. You are special. You don't let no motherfucking doctor or nobody tell you that you need to be put on medicine. You gotta let a kid be a kid. You, if you're hyper, that's your personality. That's, that's just you. You need to be happy about that. You need to figure out what, what makes you special because I'm just all that. I'm just that bitch. Now, is this something that runs in your family? Are other members of your family Yeah, they're all crazy. They're crazy. They're crazy. They got a bunch of shit going on with them. They do. They crazy ass people. But me, I, I, ain't, I ain't like them. You know, I got ADHD, you know. But I'm just stellar. You know, I, don't, I, don't, I ain't got none of that other shit that they got. What about your own personal child? Is this something that they have as well? Yeah. They do. Yeah, but I don't want to talk about my babies. 
I never talk about my kids. I never show them because they're so special to me that I take them personal. So I feel like what I give the world is what they what is as much as they get. They don't need to know my children. They don't need to see my children. They're mine. They belong to me. You know, so I don't really speak on them. My babies are so smart, though. I breastfed all of them, and they're just, they're really intelligent. And I, I really love being a mom. Like, that's my favorite thing besides me being the superstar that I am. Care to share how many you have? Three. Three, ch yeah. three children. I would have ten. If I was still in the hood, hmm. Let me tell you something. These niggas, even just right now, these niggas always be trying to get me pregnant and shit. That's I got some good ass pussy. So I, I feel like, honestly, if I wasn't such a, such a strategic hustler and I didn't have goals, I would be having 10 kids right now because niggas always want to get me pregnant. Like, I'm really just that girl. I got some good ass cat. Period, pill. Now, you drop out of 10th grade. Was there any thought on a GED? Perhaps. Yeah, I tried. Okay, so let me tell you something. I was homeschooled too. That didn't work. I tried to go get my GED. I couldn't sit in at the computer and just. I can't do that. I can't sit down. Like I can't sit at a computer for hours and do things like that. That's not even how I learn. You know, people learn different ways. There's people who learn from watching something. There's people who learn from listening. There's people who learn from music. Like, there's different ways to teach certain people, and I don't give a fuck about no motherfucking GED. Fuck GED. I don't give a fuck. I'm never working for no motherfucking white man. I'm always going to be getting this money out here. I'm always going to be an entrepreneur. I don't need no motherfucking GED to tell me how to get this money because I know how to do it. The streets taught me that. When you were uh, going to school, were you part of a certain crowd back then? No, I actually was a loner. You know, it was, it, it was always me being mixed between the cool kids and the good kids you know i would go from tables to tables i would sit at the table with the cool kids and i had a friends who were good girls so it was always back and forth it was just it was just really weird like i don't know school wasn't i, I hated school i really hated school hate that's such a strong yeah word. i hated school i hated it i hated the people i hated the teachers i hated how they operated i just knew i wasn't supposed to be there how big was gang activity in the city you were growing up back then? It wasn't no gangs. These niggas just like to shoot. That's, niggas ain't, even like in Atlanta or in Delaware, like it ain't no gangs out here. Like niggas just shoot, shoot shit up. It ain't no gangs. They ain't on that shit. Ever played sports? Well, when you were in I school? was, no, but I was actually grew up in martial arts since I was six. And I've been a cheerleader. I know how to fight real good though. My grandma. Well, as a sensei, my, I had to grow up in that because my grandma raised me. My grandma was sensei and my auntie, all them black belts and shit, so I just grew up in it. How many years of that stuff did you take? At all the years of my uh, long time, all my childhood. I didn't want to be in that shit, but I just had to, so I just, you know, I know certain things. I know how to move. I know how to protect myself. Did you make it to a certain belt? It was more so, let me tell you, when you raised... I don't know how to explain it, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that shit. Cheerleading? Did you do any uh, d like competitions? Did your did your team do regionals? Um, state? I was a high school cheerleader. I was a high school cheerleader, and I did gymnastics. So my mom kept me in things like that and karate. So I know when I got off of school, I was going to cheerleading. I was in gymnastics, and I was doing karate. She kept us in certain stuff. But uh, competition-wise, did your school ever do like mm -mm. state, national no, they stuff didn't like do that? that shit. Cause honestly, we was trash, so that's probably why they didn't do that. What about music-wise? Uh, did you ever do the band? Did you ever do chorus? Things of that nature when you were in school? Yeah, but that shit was trash. That shit was trash. W both? You did both the band and and chorus. I did. Um, yeah, I did both. I, I played the flute in school, and we did singing and shit. But that shit was trash. Like, damn, I look good at fuck. How much of the band or chorus did you get under your belt? Probably like. I just remember playing the flute a little bit, like a little bit. 
It was like this song that we learned and that was it. Why the flute of all the instruments in the band? Because it's all we had. We didn't have instruments at school. The only thing they gave us was flutes. Wait, are you talking about the recorder? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a, well, I've seen people do the recorder long ways. I guess the way you're doing it. Oh, well, I don't remember, but I know we did this one and we did this one. That's more like the recorder I'm familiar with. I think the other ways is more like the flute, but maybe you can do the recorder like that. Hot cross <laughs> That was definitely the recorder. <laughs> yeah, the recorder, that's one of the first things they teach is hot cross buns. For real? Yeah. You know that too? Yeah. Hot cross buns. Yeah, that was so dope. And uh, you said it was, well, I don't know why you didn't keep going with it. You didn't like it? You said yeah, it was that trash. Shit was trash. I don't want to be no motherfucking, f I, didn't, I didn't like it. We had to sing that fucking Hot Crust Bun song all the time. Like, I want to uh, play, like, let's sing some motherfucking Tupac or something. Not no fucking Hot Crust Buns. When it came to uh, you rapping, were you the type that was ever freestyle or yeah. battle rapping other classmates when you were in school? Yeah, I was. I loved it. I, I wanted to be a battle rapper at at this age, but niggas just, it ain't enough money in that shit. That's what they tell me. That You wasting your time, Suki. Look at battle rappers and how they get to that steep, that, that peak right there and they don't go anywhere else. It's just, that's it. You were good at freestyling or good at battle rapping? I was good at freestyling. That was, that was my shit. I, love, I just, I, I am a freestyle artist. When I get in the studio, I don't write. Just go in there, I listen to the beat, and I hum it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I build my flow from whatever I hum, and then I just go ahead and give them rhymes and metaphors just like that. But you did battle rap other classmates. Yeah. And uh, how were you? Winning more than you lost? Did you break even? How did you do with those battle raps? I think I just said really mean things to make it. I, I feel like I kind of maybe if they, even if they was winning, I would just say really mean things to kind of break the ice and be, make people not want to battle rap me. Were you ever promoting a song back then when you were in school? When I was in school, I was I wasn't in the studio. We ain't had no money to go do no studio, oh. but I had songs that I just said a lot that I made up. Ever participate in talent shows back then? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A lot. All of the time. I'm all, and I grew up in cultural arts school, so I'm in all the talent shows, everything. Like, my mom was really hands-on when it came to music and stuff with me. She used to write my songs when I was, like, a little girl, and I used to sing them at school. And that's actually something we talked about in another segment that yep. uh, those watching can look up. Now, when you participate in these talent shows, did you ever win one? Or did yeah. you ever place? No, I, I, win. I win. I win. I think I won them all. Uh, the ones you won, was it original uh, music or yeah, was it like was covering just, music? No, it was original music. No no beat, no nothing, just me rapping. Somebody watching this and they want to win a talent show themselves. Any advice? Yeah, okay, so I do have some advice for somebody who's entering a talent show and wants to win. You just got to put your all into it and have fun. You, you also need to work on your public relations. You, you need to know how to, you know, move a crowd and communicate with people because that means everything, all right? So it's not always about what you want to do, but it's about what the people want. I know you might want to sing this. I know you might want to do this and look this way, but it's about what the people want when it comes to them picking you. So period, Pooh. That's, that's the one. Now, when it comes to you uh, dropping out of high school and you attempted to... Uh, to finish with like a GED and that sort of thing. Um, is music for you taken seriously right after that? Or is there mm -mm, mm -mm, a break? Is there mm -mm, time mm -mm, that elapses before music is no. serious at another point? Before time? I started taking this music shit serious, I only been pop popping for the last, like this is my, this is like my first, okay, no, cause the year just started, but it's, it's been like a year. Like when did we do our first interview? Like a year ago. Okay, it's been a year since I've been lit. But I just started taking the rap shit serious. Like, I was like really just in the streets, like heavy. And 
you know, the streets, let me tell you something about the streets. The streets don't love you. And I've been in the streets and I feel like the streets, uh, I stayed until the streets took everything from me. Like I had nothing else at all. And at that moment, it's just like, the only thing I really had is just my talent. And I just, you know, try to, you know, take a little shot at it and it just kind of turned out into this. Now, when you say you're in the streets, yeah, you got into street activity. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember when we were talking in this interview and you said you hung out with drug dealers and things of that nature. I mean, I everybody, mean, everybody, everybody in the hood was getting money. Everybody, I mean, everybody was, you know, I didn't know if jugging. you, I didn't know if you partaked in that activity too, or you were just hanging around. No, I was getting money too. I was getting money, you know, shit. Hmm. Care to share what types of activity you were getting into? I mean... <laughs> you know, I sold dope. <laughs> like, when I, I first got my pack in a project, Riverside Projects, and somebody gave me my first pack, it was a bundle, you know, 13 bags each bundle. The bundles was probably like $60 back, no, the bundles was probably $90 back in the day, probably like uh, $10 a, a, a pack or whatever. That, that was my first, that was my first drug I sold. And, because you said dope. Dope can mean a few different no, things. No, dope is heroin. Dope is heroin. Like, you know, I, 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 you know, everybody I know was, you know, I was only female. I was only female. All my friends, you know, they, my female friends wasn't into that, but one of my female friends, his brother was selling dope or whatever, and, you know, I got my first pack from him. And, you know, I, I, I that's... Everybody was everybody was getting money out there. Like that's what everybody was doing. Everybody's getting money. This person puts you onto it, or you're curious and you want to get in. I just it. watched them. I watched how they got money. I, I watched niggas like, even though we was girls and we played on the other side, I always watched what niggas do because I always wanted to get money. Like I, I was never just finna just be no broke ass bitch. So, you know, I seen how much it was selling for, how fast it was selling. You know, I just seen how the play was going, and I just went and caught my first pack, and you know. That's all I, that's all I, I, I ain't never get into nothing else. I just, you know, so a little dope. Ain't nobody, ain't nothing ain't no wrong with that, you know. Everybody want to get money out here. Nobody, ain't nobody trying to be broke. You know, I'll be the first one to say, yeah, I was, you know. I did do that. I did sell a little dope. Now, was it just this petty, I guess, or did you, did you, did you get deep? in the streets when it came to you uh, in that environment? I ain't never had to. My niggas ain't never, never want me to do nothing anyway. I was always the type to be wiped up. My niggas ain't never, ain't never let me, they sit me on my ass. They don't want me to do nothing like that. I always dated real niggas. A real nigga ain't gonna sit you, sit there and let you uh, trap, do nothing like that. He gonna sit you there, so, you know. Now obviously when it comes to this type of activity, consequences can arise. That looking over your shoulder feeling, certain levels of stress. Um, I wasn't stressed. I ain't had to look over my shoulders. Violence, incarceration, yeah. worst case, death. Did you experience any of this stuff when you were doing it? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't experienced nothing like that. When cops came, you know. The dope go in the pussy, and that's just that's just how that go. But I don't, I don't know. Ever had a near death experience? Mm -mm. I always been covered by the blood of the lamb. Like I always been touched by an angel. Nothing ain't never happened to me. I always been a c good. Now, uh, any regrets when you were in the streets? Thinking back, hindsight twenty. I feel like. Uh, me hanging out in the hood and all that, I feel like I, a lot of the time that I was in the hood, I wish I had somebody who could let me know how much potential I have and how powerful I really was. Cause I ain't, I didn't know that. But if I had somebody to tell me that, then shit, I would have already been blue. I would, I already, already knew the game. You know, I ain't did nothing but waste time in the streets for real, for real. Like, all that shit was a waste of time. All the people that I grew up with. They, they ain't even doing good, like, at all. Now, um, 
When it came to you growing up, before you even got in, before you ran away, before you got into the streets, things of that nature, financially, uh, what class were you in growing up financially? I know you said your, your, I your feel upbringing like I was, was just I was in okay. low class. I was in low class growing up. I wasn't, I mean, we didn't live in the suburbs. We lived in, we lived like in low income, you know. But just because that's where you born at or grow up at, that don't mean you're supposed to be there. So are we sp saying specifically here poverty? Or are we saying specifically more lower middle class? It was just low class, like what the fuck? It was, uh, it was that was this low class, like. I didn't... Was your family ever able to move up higher in class as yep, you grew up? My mom did. I don't know how she did it, but I just remember houses just started looking better, getting better. I don't know how that happened, but went from low class to middle class. Growing up in low class, what did that teach you? What did you learn? What did you take away from that environment? Um, I, 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 my grandma just always made sure we, I was happy. Like I was always happy. I never lived in, in a, like when we lived over West Side, I never was sad about it. Like I, I had everything that I wanted. You know, she made sure I was happy. I was in different, you know, activities. I was in summer camp, like, I was never stressed out. They, my family did, my parents did what they could do to make sure, well, no matter where we live at, we were still happy. Somebody watching this interview, they might be living in low class right now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, circumstances could be different for everybody, but anything you would say to somebody growing up, living in, in, in low class right now, watching this interview and hearing you and your story and you enduring that yourself? Um, I would say, you know, just because of what your situation is, it doesn't define who you are. You know, a lot of people come from, uh, you know, a bad background or low, low income or, you know, that doesn't define who you are. You define who you are. And I know you, you might want to get out that situation that you're in, but you have to mentally get yourself out first, like I always say. So never feel depressed or sad about your situation. You never know why God has put you where you at and he might put somebody else in a mansion and he might put you in the hood. You you know, he only give you what you what you strong enough to make it out of like he put you there cuz he know you can make it out. You just got to understand how potential how how powerful you are and the potential that you got. Now, I understand how you feel about jobs, but did you ever try your hand at a job? Yeah, before? I did. I um I worked I I've been working in salon did hair. I went to school for hair. I worked at a thrift store in Atlanta. I mean, Austell, and I worked at Popeyes before, but they fired me. Why? Popeyes fired me because I, I guess I couldn't keep up with what they had set up. So, and they, I felt like they kind of treated me really bad too. Uh, the other jobs you quit those. The salon, the thrift store that I was working at, I, I quit, cause they, the lady, she was, she treated me bad too. And the salon, you know, that was kind of like me being my own boss, cause I make my own money. But I don't know how. I guess that just stopped too. And you, you got like a certificate for that? No, I dropped out of cosmetology school too. You did. And I was just doing, you know, it don't matter. Right now, it don't even matter going to cosmetology school or not. I know how to. I knew how to do hair. I was gonna have clients regardless. And uh, at each position, uh, what was, what, what did you have to do? Like at the thrift store, what what was your position exactly? At the exactly thrift store, we I would have to get the clothes out and, I guess, fold them, put them on hangers. It was just a horrible job. Very low pay. And that was like the worst time of my life. It really was like, I did not like working there. And it was really hard to pay my bills. Cause I was only like making just enough to pay my bills. I didn't even have much furniture. I didn't have much food in my house. So it was like really hard. And uh, what about Popeyes? What was your position there? Popeyes, I was just like kind of doing drive-through and I did cashier. 
I can't. I could never work for somebody else again. Like that's just traumatizing. I can't let nobody tell me what the fuck to do. And like what I notice is like, I always say this. Uh, you know, if you don't chase your dreams, you will be working for somebody who chased theirs. That's just how it go. So I ain't finna work for nobody. Nobody finna tell me what the fuck to do. Like I already know what I want to be. I don't want to work for nobody. The salon, you were just doing hair there? or Yeah, I was doing things? hair there. How'd you do compared to other people that were doing hair in that salon? I was like one, I was really a good, I was a good hairstylist. I was a good hairstylist. I did, I did dreads and shit. Now any, well, before I ask you this question, were any of those jobs tough? Yeah, Popeyes was fucking tough. Like, who the fuck do they think they are? Like, bitch, like, who the fuck is y'all? Y'all don't just run run over people like that. Make them work them hard hours, barely pay them. It was just horrible. I can't, people are going through so much in life, and I never treat, when I go get my fast food, like, I go out to get some fast food, maybe checkers or whatever, I always treat them with the utmost respect, because I remember when I, you know, I had to work in fast food. Even if they get my order wrong, I always treat them with a lot of respect. Cause I remember when I worked at uh, like restaurants, people would treat, like customers would kind of act like they were better than me, or whatever. I just never, I would never step down to that level and do that to another human. Like that ain't right. Any crazy stories dealing with any of these jobs? Anything that happened out of the norm? Mm -mm. That whole shit was out of the norm. Working for a motherfucker is out of the norm, especially for a bitch like me. I'm, I'm a big time one. Like I'm really just a big time one. Because you worked at Popeyes, are you sick of their food? No, I really, I love Popeyes. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'll be, still be eating that shit, but I really love checkers, though. Now, if you could, would you ever consider owning? A checkers, I would. What about a Popeyes? Nah. What about a thrift store? No. Salon? No. Now, in regards to your family, in this interview, you mention your mother, you mention your grandmother, and I'm assuming grandmother on your mother's side. Yes? Uh-huh. What happened to your father? Mm. Well. Um, the, the guy who we claim as my father has got killed. His name is Alex Wright. That's my dad. He got killed. Were your parents uh, separated? They were, they were like 16 around the time. So he got killed when you were, uh, really, really young. Was there ever another male figure in your life? My mom's uh, husband, you know, but nobody else. This would be considered a stepfather? Yeah. Um, what's your relationship with him like? He mad cool. He loved my mom. Remember what age you were when he came into the picture? I was like 12. And I didn't like him when, we, when he first came around. How did things progress to the level they are now? This maturity, growing up, and me gaining, learning how to respect adults. I didn't have any respect for them. Now, somebody watching this right now they may be having a step parent themselves they're growing up with. Uh, obviously, circumstances could be different for everybody, but anything you would say to somebody that's that's got a step parent? If, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not, they don't always just try to control you. Maybe they really have your best interest, you know? So, I don't fucking know. And just thinking too, um, 
even before uh, even before uh, the, your stepfather got into the picture. Uh, your father died in your life when you were young. Uh, how do you think that affected you? I mean, I had this nigga out in the streets that was claiming to be my dad or whatever, but he never did shit for me. He don't know me. He never did nothing for me. He got other kids, so I don't know him. He don't know me. And at the end of the day, hmm, you ain't got to take pictures with niggas and producers and tell them that I'm your daughter because I'm not your daughter. You ain't never did nothing motherfucking thing for me. So you is not my dad. My dad died. He ain't Alex Wright. Anybody else that's saying they my dad, you ain't my dad. You you a sorry excuse. You never been there for me. You never want help me with homecoming. You never helped me with bills. Nothing. You never seen my kids. You was not my dad. So whoever out there claiming to be my dad, you ain't my dad. Don't take no pictures. Don't claim it. Cause you you fail as a father. So don't don't try to claim me now. And I don't got no money for you. I don't got nothing for you. And I, if I see you in the streets, I'ma act like I don't know you. Me personally, uh, I'm a little confused here with the answers, but uh, this could be a sensitive subject, so I'll just leave it. Yeah, as I don't want to talk about that fucking nigga. Cause my mom, she got she she has my stepdad that she married, but you know. Um, Alex, we thought, you know, Alex is my dad, and his mom and his family treats me as if I was the grand, their granddaughter in, in our family, but when the blood test came back, you know, a, another guy is my dad, and he, um, he always knew that he was my dad, but he just wasn't a, he just never did anything for me, or and never been there for me. Uh, he he had a girlfriend. He he treated his girlfriend better than me, you know. He made sure he did everything for his girlfriend. Had her looking nice, paid for her hair, made sure she was the baddest bitch out in the streets. And I got a sister and brother on on his side too. He make sure he take care of them and everything. And it's just like he wasn't ever there for me. Never did anything for me. Never no birthdays, no holidays. I never got to see him, but I know. Recently, I seen a picture with him and a producer, and they sent it to me and said, hey, I seen your dad, you take a picture with me, say, you his daughter, but it's just like too late for that. You never gonna shine off me. Like, you fucked up, weird ass nigga, dirty dick ass, broke ass nigga, funky booty ass nigga. Has he attempted to come into your life? He wouldn't do that, he know better. What can he say, what can he say? He's embarrassed. Could start with an apology. And then what? Okay, I'm sorry for being a poor excuse as a father. He's he's a grown ass man. Like it's how could you be sorry? You raise other children. There's also some people that want answers to these type of questions, like why, you know, and things of that nature. Who? People that are going through the same thing. People that are in a position like you, they they might want to know. Well, why are you treating these people like this, and you didn't treat me like this? Why? I really don't know. I, I, I mean, it would never be an answer. Like, it's kind of like a lack of responsibility. Well, what I'm saying is, this he may have an answer for that. He doesn't. Like, what answer? Would, it wouldn't be no answer. Like, come on. It wouldn't be an answer. My grandma used to try to take me over there to his house and to his uh, mom's house. And they just always treated me like I was, you know, like, maybe like I was like a, a, a uh, um, like an ugly duckling or like a a black sheep. Like I just, I don't know. I feel like they didn't want me to be a part of their family. When I was three, you know, my grandma took me over to um, their house and they kind of just hid behind the door. Uh, do you need a uh, tissue? Uh-uh, I'm okay.
this type of uh, this type of stuff that you uh, have endured and experienced and gone through. Um, ever sought counseling for this stuff? Ever sought therapy um, for this stuff? No, nah, I never needed no therapy for it. I mean, it was, it's cool. I never like really. It's never been a big deal. It's just like okay, that's what it is. My mom and my grandma, they used to do like extra stuff for me to, you know, to make me like not really think about it. Cause I remember like my sisters go getting to go to their dad's house and stuff. And it was just like, I was like the only one. I ain't really have nowhere to go. This, it is what it is. I'm just happy like, you know how my life is right now. It's just like so awesome. It's just like, like people like like him. I, I just would never speak to them. Like I don't even have no grudges. It's just like you ain't a part of me. So, you know. As far as uh, siblings on your your mother's side, uh, yeah. Were you the only child or no? No, 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 no. I have um, I have uh, three sisters on my mom's side. So it's me, Yaz, Naya, and Rain. But my grandma raised me because my mom had me young. She was like 16, so you know, I stayed in my grandma's. I had my mom and my grandma. Were there times uh, you would just be with mom and, and grandma was, I don't want to say out the picture, but you were just like solely living with mom? I mean, kind of, but we all kind of lived like close to each other. Like it was always very close, like in the same city and stuff. I see. And uh, you're the oldest? Yeah, I'm the oldest. On on mom's side. What's that like being the oldest on the ladder? Um, I mean, it's not, I don't know. I was raised by my grandma, so it was just like, hey. There were times when it was all four of you under one roof? Yeah. And it was something to get used to when I'm being treated like an only child with my grandma. But I love my sister so much. So. What were the living arrangements like uh, when it was all four of you under one roof? I had my own room. Jazz and Rain had their own room. Naya just got born. Like, Naya didn't even exist at that time. So. I see. Anything you would say to somebody uh, watching this that's the oldest on the ladder in their family? Um, no. <laughs> I don't know what to say to them about that. You had so much things to say about everything else, but that's <laughs> Because it's just like, okay, you're the oldest. Uh, it means that you're the babysitter, and, you know, you have all the responsibilities. You have to do the cooking. You have to do everything. But it's just like, it's nothing, I don't know. Anybody else in your family, besides you and your mother, do music? My cousin, my grandfather, like I come from a uh, family who, who loves music. Like everybody did, dabbled in it, but you know, I'm like the... Have you collaborated with any of your other family members? Mm -mm. Not even mom. Mom never got no, on a track. Uh, she's old. <laughs> Not even for fun. No, I'm not putting her on nothing. You could go viral. And she'd be trying to act cool and stuff. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'd rather just embarrass my own self. Uh, when it was other family members doing this, uh, it was a supportive atmosphere or competitive at all? No, it's always been supportive. What does your family think about your music career choice at this point? At first, oh, wait, okay, so the Henderson side of my family, you know, I... I looked online one time and I seen them talking like really bad about me. Like they were saying me and stuff like, why is she like this and this is just sad and y'all bitches can suck my fucking dick. I don't even fucking claim y'all ugly ass bitches. Y'all is ugly, y'all dirty, and bitch, don't you ever try to judge me, bitch, cause a lot of y'all do a lot of fuck ass shit. A lot of y'all is gay and you don't want to tell people that you gay. A lot of y'all do fraud, like y'all not the best people. Like, y'all might not do drugs, but 
I don't fuck with y'all, and don't y'all ever try to judge me because of my choice of my career. Bitch, I'm getting money out here, and my kids is straight, and I take care of my motherfucking family. You puss ass hoes. Don't speak on me. Y'all will never get no money out of me. My first motherfucking Grammy, get what I'm saying? I'm gonna say, fuck y'all. Hmm. I seen what y'all wrote online, talking about, I can't believe she's like that. Bitch, you can't believe what? You can't believe that I don't work for no motherfucking white man? You can't believe that I'm out here getting my fucking money and I'm chasing a fucking bag? Bitch, I'm not a porn star. I'm not selling pussy. Bitch, I rap about this motherfucking pussy. Bitch, y'all need to go find somebody to love on y'all. Y'all need to go love yourself, because guess what? If you love yourself, you wouldn't worry about a bitch like me. And I don't even claim your motherfucking asses. So don't sit online and speak on me, bitch, because I don't even want nobody to know I'm your motherfucking family, bitch. You lucky that I ain't, uh, I ain't cuss your puss asses out. Don't speak on me, whack ass hoes. Mom was supportive of this stuff right away. My mom took time when she seen that I was serious with it. She's like, this is my daughter. She's going to do what she got to do to make her money come out. No, my mom don't want to raise my kids. And she... I, I'm the one that's going to do it, so she's going to support me. And she knows that I'm a star, so she's going to help me get to where I need to get to. That's what a good support system is. And as far as the other, other people in my family, y'all bitches <laughs> need to learn how to suck some dick with those dry ass slips that y'all got. Y'all bitches don't know what the fuck to do with y'all life. That's why you're mad. Wait, what about grandma? My grandma's supportive. Yep, she always supports me. She's supported me my whole life. She was the one who put me in dance classes and everything. She's very been hands on with me and she loves me. And my aunt Nini loved me too. Now, we talked about this before about uh, your mom. She's one of your managers. Yeah. Right? And you said you, earlier you said you have different managers for different things. Yeah. So when it comes to your mom, what do you, what is her manager role, I guess? She, she's my for your career. business manager. Yeah, okay. she's my business manager. And I know you don't like performing in front of them or grandma because of, you know, the, the content, the music. I don't prefer to, but I, if I have to, then, you know, it is what it is. So what do those two actually think about the music? Not the career, the music. They know my music, Ratchet. But they don't think, they, they, they just know this is the new wave. Like, they just know what it is. Like, hey, you got to accept it. It is what it is, you know. They, they don't feel no type of way. Especially when... <laughs> Me being that bitch, huh, 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 like they don't. Have they tried to sneak in to see you perform or no? Yeah, I mean, I, they, they be watching me. They, they know everything that I do, so they, 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 they pay attention. Have they ever tried to critique it? Have they ever tried to get you to tone it down? Have um, they ever? Mm -mm. When it comes to mom, grandma, best advice they've ever given to you at this point? Ma, the best advice that my mama gave me is to run my own business. And, and she just, she always kind of teach me to like, you know, when I go through it with a nigga, she always kind of teach me how to boss up. My grandma taught me how to, you know, get money out these niggas. And, you know, she, my grandma taught me how to finesse. She taught me how to, uh, like, finesse the system. She's she taught me how to grow weed. She taught me how to shoot. She taught me how to shoot too. I know how to shoot. I know how to shoot real good. She taught me, uh, she taught me all types of fraud stuff. Like I'm, I love my grandma. Oh wait, I didn't mean to say that grow weed shit. I already said it. I mean, it is what it is. She's not gonna give a fuck. You said what you said. Yep, I said what I said. <laughs> Value one. <laughs> <laughs> it, you, these things that your grandmother has taught you could get you into trouble too, no? I'm straight out here. I love my, my grandma, my real gangster. My grandma is a gangster. My grandma a gangster. My mama a gangster too. My, that's why I'm really a gangster. I don't want no credit for that, but my grandma a gangster. Has she ever tried to rap herself? No, nah, she, she don't. She don't get down like that. It's curious. Nah.